What's going on everybody? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to pitch yourself on an AI set just like this one. So let's jump right into it. First things first is you need to make sure that you're shooting your video in a controlled lighting environment. Make sure that you're not using windows to light your video. Make sure that you're using lights because if the lighting changes throughout your shot, it can cause problems with this certain effect and blending the certain effect to make it work. Secondly, this one's pretty obvious, is you need to make sure that your camera is locked down. Put it on a tripod and make sure that you don't move the camera. And if you do move the camera, you gotta start all over again because it's really not gonna work if you move the camera at all. And the third thing that you need to make sure that you do is shoot in manual focus. If your focus breathes at all or the focus changes at all, it's really going to ruin this effect and you're gonna be having a nightmare in post trying to make this effect work. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do once you jump into the computer with your footage is whether you're working in Premiere Pro or in After Effects, and After Effects might work a little bit better for this just for the compositing side of things, you're gonna to wanna to grab a still frame from uh, your clip. So right here you can see I have this still frame right here, and I ended up actually filming vertically. And the reason that I did that is I, a couple reasons. One, I wanted more real estate vertically of actual footage, stuff that wasn't generated by AI. And two, I had like a, a big cabinet over here on this side and then a table over here. I didn't want the AI to see that. I don't want the AI to try and start generating stuff based off that because it will actually end up doing that. So essentially I gave it as little information as possible to play off of. So the first thing you're going to do when you get into uh, here is you're going to just go ahead and start cropping. So I'm going to change the ratio to 16 by 9. And when I expand it, it's going to ask for generative fill. And for this example, I'm just going to tell it a coffee shop, see what it comes up with. A lot of this is trial and error. You're going to have to go back and forth with messing with this because sometimes it will shoot out some weird stuff, um, especially if it decides to put people in the photo. If it does people in the photo, sometimes it can come up with some creepy looking stuff. And the first option, of course, it created some creepy looking people over here. So if you look to the right here, we'll have a couple different options. That one doesn't really look quite right. That one definitely doesn't really look right. I don't know why it decided to put me behind like a weird wall or something. I don't know. So we're just going to hit generate again. All right. So here it actually came up with a much better example. Let's go through. Okay. So I really like this one. And the reason I do is if you notice, this side of the face is more lit. It actually put a window next to me. So it actually got the lighting pretty close in my opinion. It, is that a weird hand? Let's just check the last one because, oh, the last one's actually pretty decent too. And as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, it will try and play off stuff in your scene. So it made this couch here. As you can see, it kind of tried to replicate the real couch that I was sitting in. Let's use this one. Now from here, I like to clean it up sort of. So get a base scene that you like, and then you're gonna sort of have to build your scene from there. So let's say like this, uh, let's go to the lasso too. I don't want that. I'm just gonna hit generate. I'm not gonna tell it to generate anything. Sometimes you tell it things to generate, it works really well. Other times it comes up with some really weird stuff. So that removed that. And then we can see if it will make a better table. Okay, so sometimes it does this weird thing. I don't know if it's dependent on the angle that you shoot at or how many leading lines it has to go off of. Sometimes it puts stuff like super close in the foreground, so we're just gonna stick with the original. Um, sometimes, it, it, you know, you can sit here and work it for a long time and tell it over and over again, and sometimes we'll shoot something out. Also, just for fun, you can also do stuff crazy like this. Sometimes it gets a right, sometimes it doesn't, we'll see. This time, it didn't get it right. It just cut the image right in half. So let's say. That's pretty good, actually. That's horrible. But that's pretty good, too. Sometimes it does this weird stuff where you'll see the floor like 
can't really decide what it wants to do. Like it's trying to be hardwood, but carpet at the same time. That one actually works super well. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Last thing, let's just remove this because I don't want a random air vent in there. One more thing on top of this, if you get a scene that you like, you can actually then again expand the frame again. And then you could say something crazy or if you just hit generate, it will go ahead and uh, expand what it's already, you know, the AI scene that it's already created, it's gonna go ahead and expand that even larger. So that actually turned out pretty cool. Let's see the other variations. That one's not bad. Okay, so once you're done in Photoshop and you have your photo exported, you're gonna wanna go ahead and jump over into After Effects. Now in After Effects, already on my timeline, I have the uh, video here and the photo. And since I filmed this particular video horizontally, and since you're adding essentially real estate and more pixels, you're gonna have to go ahead and line the two up. So the easiest way that I found to do that, and I'm sure there's a lot easier way, or the, the way that I've been doing it, I should say, because it's not super easy. Drop the transparency of your top layer. This we're gonna have to rotate. Uh, and we're gonna have to scale it down because essentially we added more pixels into the frame. So there's not any crazy leading lines, I guess, besides the baseboard down here. So I'm gonna go off that to get a general idea and then see if I can line up the couch. All right, so I had to scale it down some. Looks like I got pretty close and pretty happy with how close it's aligned up. Now, I'm not sure if the AI, when you do it in Photoshop, adjusts the color, because if we, if we turn the transparency back up here, you notice this is sort of like a reddish clip and then right under it, it definitely made it a lot cooler. So I don't know if it does that based on the things that it generates in the scene, but we may have to use a little bit of color correction on this to really make it line up. And that may be kind of dependent on your clip, but what we're gonna go ahead and do next is we are definitely going to have to feather it because the AI, what the AI will do is actually slowly blend it. Whereas obviously this is a very sharp line as you can see. So let's go ahead, just create a mask here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and feather this mask. That actually looks pretty decent. Sometimes, I mean, if I really wanted to, you could work these lines out. You can see where it went from real to AI. You could probably go ahead and do like a Gaussian blur there and sort of blur the line. All right, so what we're gonna do next, and I understand there's this line here that AI made, probably should have worked on that a little bit more in Photoshop, um, maybe blur the line a little bit in Photoshop. But what we're gonna go ahead and do from here is obviously there's some extent of noise in the video that there isn't in the photo. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is grab noise here We're just gonna add something like 2% noise to the video. And you can sort of see what that does here. So let's go over here where there's not that weird line that I probably should end up fixing, but you know, I don't know if YouTube's really gonna catch this well after it compresses the video, but it definitely helps to match the noise. And depending on your camera, you're gonna have to adjust with the slider. I don't really have much color noise in here, so I can go ahead and turn use color noise off. So it's gonna be more of a grain and there's not a lot of noise at all. So I'm just gonna add like 1%. If you got a noisier camera, obviously more noise, less noisy camera, obviously less noise. The final thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is we are going to nest these or pre-compose them. I've been, I don't know why I said nest. And then we are going to go ahead and add one more layer of noise. So essentially the noise layer was next to it. Now this layer is going to be over the both of them. So it's gonna help just bring them together, I guess a little bit better and blend them a little bit better. And then after that, after you work everything out, this is sort of the final product.
So that is it for this video. If you like this video or have any sort of ideas on how this concept might be improved, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there's a ton of ways to improve it. I've already thought of some more ways to improve it. Just wanted to sort of get this done as fast as I can because I thought this was a pretty cool concept um, to sort of work around with. But if you did like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe button down below. It really does help. But until next time, I'll see you later.